baby. I need to become clean. Yes, I do. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hello, my historical fashion friends, and welcome to my new apartment. We are super excited! Yay! Hi everyone, I've got a new place! And it's almost Halloween. Uh, welcome to the gold curdle video, which I've been working on for like an entire year. Uh, definitely took a lot longer than I thought. I kept getting interrupted by other projects that I wanted to do. And, uh,. Yeah, so finally it's here and it's going to be in two parts because I was editing it and it was like an hour and a half long, so definitely a two-parter. Uh, but I'm really excited about it and it's a like 15th century side lacing kirtle made from some thrifted curtains and uh, I'm excited to have something kind of different in my wardrobe and also excited to start working on a lot more structured garments and some kind of interesting things. Uh, I also am making a Arwen Halloween costume which turns out apparently everybody is uh, making an Arwen costume right now so yeah I hope my video will be a little different and I still have to uh, edit and post my making my wedding dress video which is also coming up. I have a lot of stuff to edit. Anyway, we've got some Halloween decor, and uh, yeah, let's get to the video. If you like this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos, and uh, I'm going to show you what I did to make this. First, I'm starting off by drafting the pattern for the bodice of my kirtle. I'm following a pattern from the Tudor Tailor, and I did my own measurements off camera, and I am using them to alter the pattern to fit my body. The book provides a lot of different options for the neckline and sleeves, lacing patterns, basically, all the different ways you can mix and match your Tudor kirtle pattern. I chose to do a short sleeved version. Uh, I will be adding the sleeves later, so this version is sleeveless. But I also chose to do sort of a kind of quasi V neck neckline on the front and back. So that is what I am drafting out here, but I will kind of alter the V to be a little bit different later on. I'm just cutting out the top of the bodice, even though it's not going to have a waistline on the outside, because I will be testing out the pattern using the lining, which will be in multiple pieces, and then I will cut the entire full dress pattern out of the outside fashion fabric, once I have confirmed that all of the measurements are working out well. The front and back pieces for this pattern are pretty similar on me personally because I do not have a large bust, so I don't need to create a lot of alteration at the center front. Uh, if you have a larger bust or a more curved top of your body, you'll probably have to do a little more alterations to your pattern from the front and the back, um, but I am basically rectangular, so I don't have to change a lot from either side to make it be form-fitting. And here are some of the inspiration images that I used um, for kind of the look that I was going for with this, and uh, I think it's going to be good for using for a couple of different uses either as the top of something or by itself with a, just a shift or also underneath uh, other later styles of fancier kirtles with just some of it showing. So now you can see I am cutting my pattern out of my lining fabric 
and I was kind of using a lot of different pieces of fabric for the lining because I didn't have any one piece that would be big enough and I was kind of trying to use up some scraps so my lining is in a lot more pieces whereas my outside fashion fabric is only in four pieces um, but my lining I made the bodice in four separate pieces and then I used four pieces for the lining of the skirt. After I cut out all four of my lining pieces, I pinned them together and tried it on just to make sure that I liked the fit and I ended up doing some adjustments on it, uh, especially the kind of width and the shoulder seam area because the, the shoulders were a bit too wide and I kind of fixed the neckline a bit after trying it on. The style I'm going for here is sort of a bridge between the Middle Ages and the Tudor period, something that would kind of represent the evolution between the two, and something that could be kind of used for either interpretation, uh, with just some accessory changes and maybe an outer gown. Now I am just trimming off some of the excess fabric so I can use my lining pieces to have as the pattern pieces for my fashion fabric. And I'm making sure to leave the seam allowance as well so I don't cut that off. Uh, but after this, I will be using my lining to trace out the full entire fashion fabric outside pieces. I also traced out the adjusted lining fabric pattern pieces onto some new pattern paper just so I could save them because it's a lot easier to adjust the shape of an existing pattern than to have to redraft an entirely new pattern for future kirtles. So uh, that is what I've done. Now I'm using a tape measure to make sure I have the correct length on my skirt. I always add like three or four more inches just in case so that I can hem it up to the length that I want after I have tried it on already. Yeah. 
Off screen, I also ended up using these bodice lining pieces to create a second set of lining for the interlining so that I could have a little more stiffness in the top of the kirtle. Although with the thickness of the fashion fabric, I almost feel as though it wasn't really that necessary and almost made it too thick. After I created the length of the skirts for the fashion fabric pieces, I then used those and folded over the bodice to create the bottom lining for the skirt portion of my kirtle. Be sure to stay tuned for part two where I will show you how I put all of these pieces together and the final result. How am I supposed to trace this with you doing that, huh? going on oh by the way i've also started twitch streaming for some more long form crafting kind of not exactly historical costuming content uh over at gabrielle westwood on twitch so i'm going to do a new video uh this week streaming i guess new stream uh on twitch which is going to be another Halloween fall type video where I'm going to... Oh, kitty. Get the toy! Get the toy! Attack! Chase really likes that bird toy. Uh, where I'm going to do um, an outfit for a dollar store skeleton and he's going to be a bog body. And uh, then I'm going to cut that into like a subscriber special. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so join me on Twitch for some more chaotic kind of uh, long form crafting. I'm finally finishing up the uh, sewing craft room upstairs and actually kind of have room to do stuff. So yeah. Thank you all for watching part one of the gold kirtle video and I'm really excited for part two and to show you the finished product so uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that and I will see you next time. Bye!